Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to my daily chat, inspirational, evocative, and ideally informative chat. Um, this is episode number 689, getting close to 700 now. And the topic today is uh, searching for the one, start close to home. Start closer to home? Start close to home, that'll do. Um, before I jump into the topic and explain what I mean, let me start by introducing myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby and I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I work with women to help them find balance in love, life, and business. And I've done these talks now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine, called Inspiring a Feminine Heart, because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And so now we're at episode number 689. And this is a Facebook Live I do every day. So in case you're watching me on other places, it starts on Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, and gets distributed to other places, and I'll give you the links for that at the back end. So today we're talking about searching for the one that start close to home because I'm going to do a spin on this. There's a certain what's we're looking for. Miss not mystery, wrong word. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a certain um, fantasy. That's a good word, fantasy. That when your one shows up, you'll be so much happier and saved, and everything will be wonderful. And it's this belief we have that you know you'll search for the one and when you get the one you'll be so happy and so relieved and so fulfilled and everything will be perfect you live happily ever after Cinderella story and all that stuff <sighs> if only it was so easy and I want to th I'm going to I've got sort of one thing looking at but I've got two other things showing up as well so let me see how I want to play with this so first of all um, what should I do what should I do so I'm watching how I play, which order I play this one because one of them is I'm going to say before you do that do this but let me put that second so after you do this do that <laughs> I'll explain what I mean when you're looking for, to find the one first of all there is a whole bunch of assumptions that when you find the one it's going to be gravy and easy and perfect and smooth and no problems the only one that can happen is if both of you are either dead or unfeeling whatsoever because when two people get together and there's feelings expressed there's going to be things that can happen that can be friction based as they can create um, challenge, I'll put it that way. So even if you do find your one, the one, stuff's going to happen. And if you're not willing to face that, you don't want to start this search. That's, that's the thing I want to say. That's one piece. Do you want to say any more about that? Yes. <laughs> so this is one reason why I think it's important that if you're going to be in a healthy relationship, you need to learn some skills to be able to communicate, because relationship is fundamentally based a large part on communication, amongst other things as well. But if you don't know how to communicate, it's very hard to have a healthy relationship. So any level of relationship, whether it's romantic, if it's business, if it's the one, anyone, the more effective you are at communication, the more able you are to communicate more honestly, more authentically, more clearly, the better off you are, and the better the relationship is going to be. That's like, check, check, check. That's good to have. Now, the other part I was talking about. Before you get to that point, before you jump into the search for the one that you've been dreaming of, envisioning on, and praying for, it really comes back to, and I've talked about this for the last few days now, so it's becoming a theme apparently, and it's becoming very clear about my work now, is it starts within you. It's the search inside begins inside of you where you become the one in a way that you're looking for. Because a lot of times what people are doing, not you, but people that you know, they're looking out there for the one because they're not willing to face their own stuff. And when that one shows up, they're going to feel better, feel distracted, and feel okay, and not worry about what's going on inside themselves. And that is an error in approach. Because you can only pretend and only hide from that for only so long. Now, you might be able to do that repeatedly after relationship after relationship after relationship, having multiple ones, like finding the one, oh, that's not the one. Find another one, that's not the one. Find another one, that's not the one. To keep yourself perpetually in the state of euphoria and chemistry but that isn't what you're really looking for I trust if it is then nothing I can say will help you because you're not looking for that but if you're looking for something deeper then I talk about some fundamental pieces one of which is again learn some communication skills meaning how do you articulate your views how do you listen more carefully because the part of it is not just talking to the other person it's listening from them so how can you be a better listener than you've been before how can you communicate more honestly, authentically, and truthfully than you had before? Those two skills, or those aspects of the same skill, communication, 
a fundamental to a healthy relationship. And if you're going to find the one, prepare for that the right way. The other piece I was talking about is about starting from the place of being the one in the first place. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning at Agape, by the way, happy Easter because it's Sunday. Um, that I really feel like my work has been shifting. If you've been watching my broadcast for the last 680 plus broadcasts, you know that I talk about love and relationships. Excuse me, I talk about love and relationships and I'm also very passionate about feminine leadership and women being in their power. But a piece of it is showing up a lot and it started a while back when I launched the self-love practice four months ago, five months ago, that I realized that a lot of my strength in my work is really helping people own their own self-support, which is what led me to, and I'll talk about this in a moment, about the new course I'm offering. But what I'm very clear about is that for everything we do in life, it starts from within, like, duh, like rocket science. But for a lot of people, we're so busy doing things out there, we forget how to be with the one inside. I talked about this yesterday, about being, if you're doing, 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 you're not being able to be connected to yourself. In the same way, when we're in this journey of life, of love and experience, everything that happens out there, everything that happens out there, is going to reflect and impact us in certain ways internally. When we become, um, I just want to say this, when we become more aware of that and more willing to look inside, then the more we can do things to change the wiring inside. What I mean by that is when you can start to watch what triggers you, what upsets you, what disturbs your peace, and you then go about ways to change your internal wiring so that no longer affects you, because you can. Here's a little, here's a little key, by the way, it's on the sidebar. Hold where I am, move to the sidebar for a second. So, for some people, when stuff happens to them, they don't think they have any control. They think that it's been done to them, they're screwed over, and they're tough luck, and they're gonna put up with it, and they're suffering. That's not true. But people believe that's the case because they've not been taught anything else. In the work I've done, and the work I've learned, and what I've been studying for the last 25, 30 years, is the ways that we can actually be able to disengage from the outside influence and have autonomy over what we choose to do inside. So we don't need to react to things, we can actually be at peace. These are master skills, I know. For some people, they're impossible skills, but they are in there. All right, back into the conversation. So knowing that you can take what's happening out there as um, <laughs> teachable moments, <laughs> is one way of putting it, but take, the, take them as opportunities to learn, then you can take your power back. Because the thing is, when things out there happen and upset you without you having any control, you're powerless which is why some people feel that way. They feel like I have no control because they're doing stuff to me and I can't do anything about it. That's how I felt when I was being bullied as a teenager. And I know how that can feel, but I know better now, thankfully, with a lot of hindsight, that there's more we can do. And part of that is that we have the ability to take dominion over our own feelings, not to numb them or stuff them down, but to take dominion when we can actually master our own feelings. So that when things happen out there, which tends to happen, we're in, like, we're in a three-dimensional world where stuff happens, then what we can do with what comes at us is process, work through, and resolve it so we can become masterful for it, uh, masterful at it. Again, what I said earlier about how it's so clear for me in my work now more and more is helping people own their own love, support systems, and, and appreciate who they are. Part of it is to be able to, to mastery over what happens to you, or should, excuse me, have mastery over how you react to things that happen to you that's more accurate. Because life happens to us, stuff happens. You know, like I, as I mentioned on a previous broadcast on Thursday, um, I, I took a, I took a tumbler down the stairs and I really jack, really hurt my back. My uh, one, of, I think I actually bruised a rib. That was out of my control, sort of. I mean, I was being clumsy. If I was being really present in the moment, I wouldn't have had wouldn't have fallen down, but I did. But then the next step is okay. So I can either bitch and moan and sit in the corner and cry and go, "Oh crap! Oh, what happened to me?" Or I can do, or the other option is the extreme, which I'm not recommending either, is go, I'll tough it out, I'm fine, I'll be okay. Is to be present to what happened. I've also been very careful walking into the stairs since then, by the way, but also having a certain reflection and going, okay, so how do I take care of myself? How do I do things more effectively? Now, this is a, this is a injury recovery pain thing, but the same t rules apply to relationship connections and communications out there. Is how can we be responsive and reactive excuse me, how we be responsive instead of reactive and be able to function in the world so that what happens around us doesn't control us. Because the thing is, when you let things upset you, you're letting them control you. And if you're like me, control is one of those things that can be challenging. And to be controlled by world, world events and by things around you puts you in a victim role. Because you are simply 
like, like Pavlovian, Pavlovian response, acting like you have no control. So you're actually lying to yourself because you do. So ha coming back to really honoring and loving who you are, respecting and supporting yourself, when you learn skills that give you faculty and skill about how you live in the world, then the world around you becomes more cooperative, more collaborative, and in a way works in favor of you because you no longer are re reacting to what happens. This is, the reason, this is one of the reasons why I, I created my new course, which is called Coming Home to You. Or Coming, Come Home to Yourself, I keep playing with the title. It's not, up on, it's not my website yet, but it's a course I'm launching at the, the end of this coming week. I hope, if enough people, talk, enough people choose into it, well, no, I'll do it anyway. If there's only two people, one person I'll do it, um, which I have. So this course is designed to give you skills and tools to allow you to learn how to support yourself, love yourself, care for yourself, and also, um, well, I'm going to use the big word, the F word, forgive yourself. That's in there as well, yes. And all these other tools, actually 13 weeks of practices that will give you skills that allow you to live your life from a more, um, hmm, proactive is a good word, from a more masterful place. Because when you're home in yourself, when you do come home to yourself, you, you tend to find that you put yourself first, which a lot of people they don't realize they're not doing. Again. When you're putting your vision out there, the intention of finding the one out there about feeling you're going to find the right one in the world, you sometimes put yourself in a place where you're actually a victim because when they don't, they don't show up, you get upset. But when they do show up, you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Either way, you don't work. So by taking mastery back, by coming home to yourself, by really living and loving who you are, then you become masterful in the world because what happens in the world dances with that. And you no longer become a ping pong ball, as I mentioned a few days ago. In that dance, you become masterful and able to anchor yourself in who you are, which means your interaction with the world is more powerful, more aligned, and more fulfilling because you're getting what you want. The funny thing is that that search for the one you want <laughs> may not necessarily be as critical after this point because when you start really falling in love with who you are because you start to own, embrace, and respect who you are, first of all, your standards are going to change. I can guarantee you that, that the one you're looking for will be one that you know will have to honor respect who you are now. Because another part of the side effects of this is your self-respect rises dramatically. And when you're out in the world, when you're around other people, people who don't respect you don't get to be around you because you won't suffer that. Like I mentioned earlier about when I was bullied as a kid, had I known then what I know now, things would have played out very differently. And most of that would have been, I would have taken care of myself, I'd remove myself I would have been more respectful for myself. I wouldn't have been a victim at the time. But that lesson plays out more and more now in my life. And I watch people do things that seem to be aimed toward me. I can choose to sidestep and realize that I don't need, and I know now very clearly, I don't need to participate in somebody else's upset. And that is, a, that is the key to freedom right there. If you haven't noticed this for yourself, that when you get invested in somebody else's upset, you are actually enmeshed in a victim role again with that person's upset. And that's not working for anybody. You're not helping them because you're not helping them facilitate out of it. You're actually invested in them maintaining it in a way. And that isn't pretty. It's not healthy. It's not good either. So back to what I said is when you come home to yourself, you don't choose to participate that, that way anymore. You learn how to have mastery, more um, self-respect. So you say, you know what? What I deserve, what I want, what I'll participate in is now here versus here. If you want some of that, I'll put a link in the comments. You can check it out. But this is a simple reminder. I'm going to put two links in the comments: the self-love practice I mentioned, and and a contact form for me because I don't have the web. I don't have the web page for the uh, the Come Home to Yourself course yet, but it'll be up and running shortly. But I want you to reach out to me if you want to find out more about it. But what I want to say is, you can take this into your life now by simply remembering, remembering, that your choices in the world are not based on other people. I'll say that one again because this is a pivot point. When you realize that the, your choices in the world are not based on other people, you're free. Because then you realize that your choices you make in the world are up to you first. Yes, I do invite you to include other people in your um, impact, as in you don't just steamroll other people. You go, well, I know that person won't be happy with this, so I'm going to let them know ahead of time that I won't be playing there or won't be participating, whatever that is. It's the recognition, though, that they're requirements don't control you. You control you, so to speak. Actually, you don't have to control yourself, you support yourself. 
So this has made some sense to you because really about this journey for seeking the one, sometimes what you're looking for isn't anywhere near what you really deserve because you didn't know you deserved it. When you come home to yourself, your standards were raised and then the one you're seeking will have to be a lot better person than you first thought you were looking for. That, for me, is worth the trip. So with that, I thank you for watching. Any questions or comments, please put them below. Um, again, I'll put links in the comments for um, the contact form so you can reach out to me to find out about the course because again, it's not written up in a web page yet. It's something I can send to you. And secondly, I will um, I'll put a link in for the, for the self-love practice as well. So also, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, thanks for watching, by the way. This is my daily Facebook Live I do at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. The replays go onto my business page and onto YouTube, so I'll give you where you can find them. So if you want to join me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby, you can watch me here live and interact. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then I also have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that, which is Barry Selby. And the playlist, playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. So any questions, thoughts, comments, please put them below. Again, I'll put links in the comments for the self-love practice and a contact form for me to find out about the coming home to yourself. And uh, I think that's it. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or thoughts, please put them below. And if you want to share this with anybody, please share it with them as well. It's not like a you must share this out. I don't want to say that. But if you have people you know should listen to this, may get value, maybe you want to <laughs> give them a slap outside the head by showing them this, please do. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with number 690. Um, I think it should be the same time. I don't think there's any change of plans happening. And uh, once again, happy Easter. Hope you're doing well. And uh, may your may your day unfold, well, the rest of your day, be a blessing and enjoy to experience. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.